Ever wonder what's going on behind closed doors just before the curtain goes up at a Broadway oh, show? It? It's 40 minutes to the opening. Yeah. Do you still get nervous? Oh, yeah. You do? But it's, it's a good kind of nerves. Get your blood up. You, you really feel your heart thumping. Really? It's hard to believe, isn't it, after 53 years? Hi. Thank you. Aisle three, past the bar. So as the audience is arriving, award-winning theater, film, and television star F. Murray Abraham turns the stage into a workout studio. What do you do? I do physical exercises. I do some stretches, push-ups, sit-ups. Really? Oh, yeah. And then I vocalize. When the curtain comes down, I do it with the audience in mind. I can hear them behind the curtain. It's pretty exciting. While backstage, his fellow cast members in Broadway's new hit, It's Only a Play, Tony winner Nathan Lane and newcomer Micah Stock run through their opening scene, but at lightning speed. Alarm. Are you in the business, Gus? No, sir, I'm an actor. I didn't mean to pry. I'm an interdisciplinary theater artist. So you're an unemployed actor. I'm an actor slash singer slash dancer slash comedian. On this day, the show's four-time Tony-winning playwright Terrence McNally looked on. He laughed Warner. all the way through that. I laughed it all the way I know, he's a big fan of his work. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Once you've done a McNally, there's no, <laughs> there's no, no going back, back. No back to check off. <laughs> Lane says he and Stock will probably do this before every show for good luck. Most of the actors have superstitions and tricks to chase away both the butterflies and the demons. We asked the cast about it at one of their regular haunts, Joe Allen, star of the Harry Potter movies Rupert Grint, Will and Grace's Megan Mullally, and Tony-winning stage and screen stars Matthew Broderick and Stockard Channing. I have a superstition with my tie. I don't change the knot. I have a thing about that. I have to keep the same tie knot. For the same tie knot? For the whole run of the show? Nice. Do you still get nervous? Right oh, before? Oh, definitely, yeah. Really? Just Every before, night? Yeah, always before the uh, my first entrance. I hate theater people! But boy, it doesn't show with you. You come bounding out there and... Yeah, well, once I get the first line out, then I can kind of then relax. Once he gets his pants off. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I might take a dump on the one I've it. A big dump! Grint gets one of the many roars of laughter in the show that's entire run is already nearly sold out. Besides waiting for Ben Brantley and the Times is what tonight is all about. Who cares what a non-entity like me thinks? It's a play about a play. Or more precisely, a play about a review of a play. This is exciting. Can we do a selfie first? Have a record of it? It takes place in the upstairs bedroom at the opening night party. A group of narcissists backbite and gossip as they wait anxiously for the critics' verdict. I don't care who knows it, I love this person. I love him, I love him, I love him. Oh, I wish I had a camera. Broderick's character is the playwright. Lane plays an actor and his best friend. I don't think it's like our relationship exactly, but our relationship is very familiar to me, our relationship in the play. I have, I have a friend like that. I have a, a actual a writer friend, a best friend. It's going to be the biggest hit on Broadway since God knows when. <gasps> God knows when! Oh, don't, don't tell me, don't tell me, let me guess. Oh. The play's ditzy producer is played by Malali. I'm supposed to be getting Lady Gaga her coat. <laughs> Micah Stock's Gus, an aspiring actor, is there to check coats. Grint is the hot, cool director, Channing, the drug addicted actress. She reminds me of nothing so much as a female impersonator in search of a female to impersonate. <laughs> and Abraham is an infamously cruel critic. You changed your name. After your review, I changed my face. <laughs> you know, here's the thing. It's a little dangerous, this play. People don't usually like to talk about. They don't this like to talk about reviews at all. Yeah. No, or the, no. And you, you only get in trouble when you talk about critics. So we've entered into a you know, the forbidden zone, in yeah. a way. Well, the whole play. But the whole play is, is you know, set I in wonder, the forbidden zone. I wonder how a, a critic can criticize it. Maybe Especially it's... Especially a certain critic, one particular <laughs> the, but One particular critic. If you can't give us unanimous raves, we'll settle for the times. In the play, they're waiting for the review by the New York Times chief theater critic, and they say his name, Ben Brantley. 
the actual New York Times I know. critic. I know. Pretty bold. I want. Do you think they'll send him to review the play? Mm. I would. I would think, and unless he feels he, you know, because he's sort like of invo so much, much involved in the play, he might. Who knows? As opening night of its only a play approaches, there's a sense of life imitating art. It's, this is a scary time, you know. We're waiting for this, these reviews, just just like the what happens in the play. This is really happening, and it's a. Uh, like maybe we should have it's done. gonna be very <laughs> <laughs> you you are in a wonderful position because the play is already a hit. Don't say that. Hey. Oh. Don't say talk about superstition. Shouldn't be saying that. Now we that. get superstition. Now I, I guess what I'm asking, in light of the fact that it's basically sold out already, does the does will the review matter? Don't say that either, <laughs> Leslie. What are you trying to do to us? But it's it's a good point, I think, that I I don't want to say it either. But I but if people bought tickets in some ways that's a good news. <laughs> well it can't just matter about the other part. It means that the audience is really enjoying it and that the word of mouth is great. And yes. We're doing our jobs and that we're bringing an entertainment to uh, Have any of you been in a play? <laughs> Well, where we're just but we itching are entertaining bruising. the audience okay. right now. Have any of you been in a play where the opening night review was snarky and a downer and the play closed? That was it. Yeah. My Broadway debut. Your very first play uh -huh. on Broadway? It's called No Hard Feelings. No Hard Feelings. I know it's true. And all no it's Hard one Feelings. Night. <laughs> oh, that's a great title. Play. Oh. It actually happened, and it closed in one night. Oh, and guess who was sitting next to me? Rita Moreno in a day glow turban. <laughs> Part of what makes It's Only a Play so funny are all the shots at real people. I wish you could have seen her face when Katie Couric introduced her as Cheetah Rivera. <laughs> Somebody said that, it's, that this is a naughty play, which is interesting because there, it, I've, I've never heard so many people gasp or go, ooh, uh, when uh, things, <clears throat> certain things are said. When you know that the person who is the butt of a joke is in the audience, does that change anything? Or yeah. don't you know they're in the audience? I mean, I wouldn't want to know that Faye Dunaway was in the audience. Yeah. <laughs> I know she used to be good. She used to be wonderful. So was Faye Dunaway. <laughs> yeah, but what would, what, do you think you'd pull your punch? No, I, you got to do the play. Uh, legendary singer actress Barbara Streisand was found. <laughs> Something about Barbara. Anything less wouldn't just disappoint audiences. Something happened to Barbara Streisand! It would let down the cast. Doesn't anybody care?